Hello and welcome to the first of our two video tutorials about Max Maps. Max Maps is MaxQDA's mapping tool and allows you to visualize relationships within your data. You might use it to develop a general idea of what your data is all about or to focus on specific aspects of your material. In order to do so, you can import your data, such as your documents, memos, codes or coded segments, into a map, arrange them freely, add further images or visualize connections. In this video tutorial, you will learn everything you need to know to create your own map. In our second video tutorial, we will show you the Max Maps models, which enable you to visualize different aspects of your data based on specific analytical patterns. I begin by selecting Max Maps from the Visual Tools section of the menu. When you open Max Maps for the first time, you will find a new and empty map already waiting for you. If you want to add a new map later on, click on New, New Map. Further below, you can already see the Max Maps models, which I explained in the second tutorial. The first thing I do is to insert my data into the map. The easiest way to do this is via drag and drop, which works with every type of data you can find in your MaxQDA project. So it works for document groups, as well as for documents, and for memos, and for codes, and also for coded segments. Alternatively, you can also right-click on an element and select Insert in Map. Or right-click on the map and insert all activated documents or all activated codes. Once imported, you can arrange the objects freely on the map. You can also group elements to treat them as one object in the future. And by using the magnifying lenses, you can not only zoom in or out, but also enlarge or shrink objects. Switch on the synchro mode here to take advantage of the connection between the objects on the map and your data in the background. Now, every time you click on the data symbol on your map, the main MaxQDA windows will jump to the respective elements in your project which is especially useful if you are working with multiple computer monitors. And if you double-click on a code, you will get a list of its coded segments, which you can then also insert via drag and drop. Max Maps enables you to rearrange your data independently from the structure of your main project. Therefore, your data is protected from changes you make in Max Maps. So renaming a code in a map doesn't affect your code system, which is great to try out alternative perspectives on your data. You can not only add MaxQDA data to your map, but also free objects or text. To do so, I click on the button Add Free Object and select, for example, a rectangle. Then I scale the object and put it in the background by clicking on this button over here. A new text field is created with the next button in line, for example to add comments or headings. Right-click on an object to see additional options. The first section is for customizing the object itself. You'll find those options on both free objects and data elements. Data elements have two more sections, which allow us to view and import further data that is associated with the currently selected element. Let's quickly go through those three sections, beginning with the options to customize an object. The first option lets you assign your object to a layer, which can be hidden or displayed at will. To manage your layers, you have these three buttons over here. The first one will open the respective sidebar and the second one will create a new layer, which I will now call data. Now I select the corresponding objects and assign them to my data layer. 
which you can now display or hide. You can also replace the symbol of an object with an image of your choice. Or add a link to a file on your hard drive, or even add a geolink. Clicking on the object afterwards would then open the file or location in an external software. The last item in this menu section changes the appearance of an object. With text you can change font, font size, color and so forth. With images I can, for example, change the color of my rectangle. In the last tab I could change my links or geolinks, but since I have none here I'm finished customizing my rectangle. To use these newly customized properties for other objects as well, I can copy them by using these two buttons over here. Or I can add the object to the library to save it for later use. You can display and hide the library with this button. Let's go back to our data elements. As mentioned before, a right click doesn't only enable me to customize my object, but also displays the associated data. For this code, for example, I can have a look at the code memo, the coded segments, or all the memos that are linked to that code. The third section provides us with special import options. Among them is the option to import all co-occurring codes of a code. If you select this option, you can choose to let the thickness of the connection lines resemble the frequency with which the codes co-occur. The same applies to the automatic import of all the subcodes of a code. The thickness of the lines here resemble the frequency with which the subcodes occur. If you want to see the exact numbers with which the codes occur, you can display them by clicking here. Other types of data elements have different import options at this point. For coded segments, you can import the actual text as a label, for example to display central passages. Right-clicking on a document will enable you to import all the codes that occur in this document or only those that are also activated. Now that we have assembled all our objects, we are ready to visualize relationships between them. To do this, we first take a look at the menu. These two buttons toggle the two basic modes with which you can interact with your map. The first one, called the Selection Mode, is the one we've used so far. It enables you to move your objects on the map. The second mode is called Link Mode, because it enables us to visualize relationships by linking data elements to each other. Now you see that once I switched to the Link Mode, the Selection Mode buttons are replaced by the Link Mode buttons. Now I select the kind of link I want to use, an arrow for example, and draw a connection line by holding the left mouse button pressed down while moving from the first object to the second one. I can then customize the properties of my arrow, for example to add a label or to adjust the line width. In case you want to arrange the objects on your map in a straight order, for example because you want to publish your map, you can activate a grid in the Options window. Here you can also adjust the maximum size for imported images and in or exclude document links. To use your finished map outside of MaxQDA, you can either print it directly or save it as an image. To do this, click on the export button, choose a suitable file format and click on save.